All right, believe it or not, uh, again, this is about China, but this should actually, uh, if you follow through and do a little research, <coughs> you might be able to make some good investments as to where all of the Chinese business is going that they are losing. So this is bad for China, but their business is going somewhere. So if you find out where their business is going and invest in those, you got yourself a great business opportunity, investment, not business, investment opportunity. Here is the article. Yuan reported on July 7th that China's textile and garment industry is suffering from a large number of orders moving out of the country like never before. According to the report, China... It doesn't say where out of the country they are moving. That's why I suggest you do a little research, find out what countries are taking advantage of this, and you have yourself some growth opportunity for investment. China is the world's largest manufacturer and supplier of textiles and garments. The regime relies heavily on exports of textiles and garments to secure foreign exchange reserves and stable employment. In the first half of 2022, data from the China Chamber of Commerce for Import and Export of Textiles, CCCT, estimated that the scale of China's textile and garment orders transferred overseas was about $6 billion. Among these, $1 billion came from textiles and $5 billion from garments. And that lets you know the garment industry, separate from the textile industry, which of the two industries to be looking for when you do a little research to find out where it's going? $5 billion just went to some country that's uh, pretty good at making garments over just the textiles for the garments. More specifically, India was the main place for textile orders, while Bangladesh, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Indonesia took apparel orders. An official at CCCT said that the transfer scale would increase to about $10 billion in the second half of this year. Eight billion of which would relate to garment orders and the rest to textiles. Yue Jin, pseudonym, head of a small textile firm in Wujiang of Jiangsu Province, said, This year's performance is very weak, even more challenging than 2020, and all orders have dropped by at least 40% compared with last year. He added that other local small and medium enterprises are also in the same situation. Raw material prices have risen since the beginning of this year, but companies have had to keep the same prices for their products to be competitive. Okay, so their prices for manufacturing have gone up, but to stay competitive, they have to keep their prices the same, which means they're paying more to manufacture the same product, which means these people right here are the first ones that are going to suffer. Low wages, dropped wages, and then this company's going to go out of business. There's the uh, investment opportunity. Meng Zhou, manager of Anhui Garment Import and Export Co. Limited, said that most factories have no customers' orders by September this year. At the same time last year, the orders lasted until at least November, and the production of garment factories was too tight to complete all orders then. But this year, factories will have no orders two or three months earlier than expected. The China Chamber of Commerce for Import and Export of Textiles has recently conducted a survey where 30% of the surveyees were small and medium enterprises. The result shows that 85% of the companies think that the customers' orders within the industry will be transferred overseas. According to China Finance, Hu Kehua, Deputy Director of Office for Social Responsibility at China Textile and Apparel Industry Council, said that the main reason for the poor market is due to epidemic prevention and control. So, epidemic prevention and control. I don't know if I've done any uh, videos with y'all on the... Uh the epidemic over there, they seem to have an army of people that walk around in white full uh, chem suits and like if there's like one case of COVID in an area of a million people, they'll lock down like 100,000 people and make them all get tested and whatnot. So that is their zero COVID policy. It's now killing their their own businesses. Uh, keep an eye on that. That's, that's, that's a, a, a trend that China seems to be wanting to take, and uh, that's that's investment opportunities, as you just saw. They're losing a lot of their textile, more garment business, and even their own people are saying it's moving overseas. They didn't say where it's moving overseas. That's where when economists say, look to developing third world economies, well, look to developing third world economies, wherever that might be, whether it would be uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, Africa, Africa's got a lot of infrastructure thanks to China. It's the Belt, Belt Road Initiative. They've wasted over a trillion dollars and not one country they've invested in in that uh, African continent 
can afford to pay them back for the exact same reason that no one else has money. So China's going to have to write off that $1 trillion loss while taking a hit in this industry, while taking a hit on their uh, building industry, while taking a hit on their housing industry. Okay, they're world leaders, and they're going to try and sell you on the yuan, the digital yuan. The video I did just before this shows how digital means you have no receipt. All they got to do is get behind the keyboard and go, and they just stole your money. They're doing it right now. If you look at my other video I just posted earlier this morning, they are literally stealing people's money, and they have no legal recourse because it's all digital. It's all digital. There's no receipt, and they're in control of the digits, which means if they erase the digits... You're bad. Vote for that, people. Let China be the way. That's what you're wanting. Me, I say, buy some silver and platinum and protect yourself from the stupid.